going live in one minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, dear participants and guests of the conference, uh, welcome to our panel titled Emerging Research on Sustainable Development Goals. And I think that our uh, panel will be very exciting and interesting because uh, we have great speakers. All of them are our PhD students at the school of uh, graduate school of public policy, uh, and uh, of course our panel is a little bit eclectic because we have different papers on different topics. But what unites all those papers uh, are issues related to governance, uh, policies, policy implementations in Central Asia and particularly Kazakhstan. So uh, the rules of our panel is that uh, we will have presentation, uh, all presentations, and after that we open uh, question and answer sessions. So please, uh, the participants and guests, if you have questions, leave them in uh, the section, uh, questions and answers. Uh, each speaker will have 15 minutes to present, uh, and... Um, as I said, uh, after all presentations, we will have this uh, question and answer sessions. And our first speaker is uh, Jana Rashikbaeva. Uh, she is a PhD candidate. Uh, her presentation titled "Fighting Corruption and the Growth of Bureaucracy: Evidence from Central Asia." Jana, please, the floor is yours. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you uh, hear me and see the presentation? Okay. Can you Actually, I can see mm. you, yes. Uh -huh. And the presentation, right? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I am very glad to be part of uh, GSPP International Land Conference on Sustainable Development Goals in Central Asia. Uh, the topic of my today's presentation is fighting corruption and the growth of bureaucracy, evidence from Central Asia. This is an ongoing research paper written by Professor Omir Barish, also the professor of Nazarbayev University Graduate School of Public Policy, and me. Uh, as you might recognize that corruption is intrinsically linked to all 17 SDGs, going way beyond institutions and financial flows to affect services and sectors we deal with every day. We all understand the role of corruption in undermining human development, and we need to fully address its corrosive effect to have, an, uh, to have any hope on achieving a disease. In particular, uh, sustainable development goal three on health and well-being is at risk uh, if corruption in public health institutions is not urgently addressed. Uh, in this slide, I want to show, uh, I want to do briefly talk about the aim of our study. So in this paper, we examined the link between government interventions and the government failures. There is a wide recognition and agreement that government interventions are essential in order to correct market failures. Uh, Ajimoglu and Verdier in their paper developed a theoretical framework to analyze this link and point out the trade-off between market failures and corruption. In their model, uh, the possibility of corruption causes the growth in the size of bureaucracy. We, uh, from our side, extend the model to include the anti-corruption policies, the policies that are designed to curb the problem of corruption. And we investigate the effectiveness of anti-corruption reforms on corruption. While the fight against corruption intensifies its uh, focus heavily on monitoring and audit mechanisms, the increase of bureaucratic layers in this process reduces the effectiveness of these policies. Furthermore, it damages the trust between and within public institutions, which in turn contributes to corruption. We empirically examine the link between the layers of audits and mistrust in public institutions and the trends of corruption perception in these countries by looking at the firm level data from four, uh, from, four, from five Central Asian economies that collect information about countries' business environment, how it's experienced by individual firms, how it changes over time, and about the various constraints uh, to firm performance and growth. So uh, in the next two slides, I want to talk about the model of anti-corruption. So to illustrate the main idea of the paper, Ajimoglu and Verdi considered the use of standard example of a negative externality, such as taxing pollution. They illustrate how the government is trapped uh, in a situation for choosing between market failure and government failure, when there is some heterogeneity between the bureaucrats who work for the government. When these employees use their power for personal gains, the government not only fails in the original objective fixing the externality, it also brings about the problem of corruption. 
One of the key results that concerns the government paradoxical choice is the increase in the size of bureaucracy in response to the significance of the externality problem. Uh, the more, the more uh, externality is pronounced, the larger the government intervention. The larger the intervention, the greater the opportunity for corruptible bureaucrats pursue larger personal gains. When the government pays incentive payments and efficiency wages, the cost of hiring more inspectors and bureaucrats increases. The budgetary limits on the number of bureaucrats that can be employed at a higher wage uh, will reduce the number of inspections, which lower the private sector actors' uh, incentive to comply. In consequence, the government needs to increase fines to increase compliance, but at the same time, larger fines increase the optimal level of bribes. In the setting, when all bureaucrats report truthful, truthfully, there is no corruption. Corruptible bureaucrats use their information power against entrepreneurs either by threatening good entrepreneurs to report them at bad unless they pay bribes or by collecting bribes uh, from bad entrepreneurs and reporting them as good. Um, so uh, when all corruptible bureaucrats can be monitored and caught easily, there is no corruption. In the opposite case, corruption can be reduced to an optimal level by increasing the wages of bureaucrats to above minimum level. If the externality problem is sufficiently large, the society is better off by paying this additional rent to public sector employees. Since the government cannot control the pool of labor force and monitoring is costly, some level of corruption is obviously unavoidable. This optimal level of corruption depends on the various factors, including the size of the market failure, the cost of monitoring public sector employees, and the overall GDP per capita income level. When the productivity in the private sector is high, individuals are paid higher, so increasing the number of bureaucrats is also most costly. In addition, by attracting la productive labor to, to the public sector, the opportunity to cost is greater because of the decline in the private sector output. In a less productive economy, government intervention becomes more desirable, not only for legitimate tax collection, but also for opportunities to collect bribes. Therefore, while the optimal level uh, of corruption may be negligible in a rich country, it will be greater cost for the less developed country. The factors that influence the likelihood of monitoring the public officials is extremely crucial for developing economies. A hier hierarchical monitoring structure in which some bureaucrats are hired to monitor other bureaucrats not only increases the complexity of the scheme, it also exacerbates the problem. Further growth of bureaucracy is unavoidable. Multiple layers in hierarchical system can explain the increase in the amount of paperwork and the red tape introducing the anti-corruption programs. Uh, in the next slides, I want to talk about the anti-corruption efforts in Central Asia, starting from Kazakhstan. Um, in each uh, slide of the Central Asian country, I put the CPI ranking, uh, and uh, CPI, uh, the rankings have not changed in the last 20 years, which uh, makes our case more stronger. So uh, Kazakhstan faces a serious challenge on fighting corruption. Over the past few years, fight against corruption uh, in Kazakhstan has received a great attention at the highest level of government and the society as well. The Republic of Kazakhstan is the first country in the post-Soviet Union at the initial stages of the development has paid great attention on fighting against corruption. The history of anti-corruption policy in Kazakhstan dates back to the decree of the President of the Republic of Kazakhstan uh, in 1992 on measures to strengthen the fight against corruption, organized crimes, form, forms of crimes and corruption. As a result on the initiative of the head of the state in 1998, the law on combating corruption of the Republic of Kazakhstan was adopted. In addition, the goal of combating and preventing corruption is enshrined in numerous documents on state policies, including the President's annual State of the Nation address. In 2015, the Anti-Corruption Agency of the Republic of Kazakhstan was founded. It's basically directly subordinate and accountable to the President of the Republic of Kazakhstan, which is focused on reducing the level of corruption in areas such as civil service, quasi-public sector, private sector, judiciary, and law enforcement agency. So combating corruption is one of the top priorities in the nation's strategic development. But uh, sc uh, corruption scandals involving high-ranking officials in Kazakhstan happen with inevitable regu regularity. So in our paper, we present some of the uh, biggest corruption scandals in Kazakhstan that happened for the last couple of years. One of the recent ones is the uh, SK Pharmacy case, when the uh, Kazakhstan Anti-Corruption Agency has initiated an external analysis of corruption risks at SK Pharmacy, a single distributor of medicines in the country, former chain chairman of the SK, uh, SK Pharmacy, Berik Sharipov, has been arrested on charges of corruption with the grave consequences, abuse of authority in the purchase of medical products during the COVID-19 uh, crisis. In June, after the lockdown in the purchase of medical products, you know, the coronavirus people were not able to find needed medicines such as antivirus drugs and antibiotics. And these medicines have disappeared from some of the pharmacy counters and were sold by dealers or were sold by dealers at significantly inflated prices. Another case is Astana LRT case, which is the rail transit project designed 22 kilometer elevated railway line that is supposed to connect the airport and new, new train station uh, through the city center. 
Uh, the estimated cost was $40 million. The expert case, uh, Talgat Yermigiaev, who subsequently convicted of receiving a bribe. Uh, Serik Ahmedov case, former prime minister and ex-defense minister, was also sentenced to prison for corruption crime. One of the decision by case was also sentenced for bribing. And a uh, recent uh, financial police case in February 2017, when the former head of the Department for Combating and Economic Corruption Crimes, uh, financial police of Almaty, was sentenced to 14 years in prison, and he was charged for aiding, creation of organized criminal groups, and lounging money, and uh, abuse of office, and bribery. So in order to reduce the level of corruption risk in the organization and administrative activities of state, law enforcement and judicial bodies, a large amount has been worked done to revise the regulatory legal acts that govern uh, rules of selection. Uh, a lot of, uh, like a, a polygraph examination has been introduced in Kazakhstan, the, the introduction of video recording procedures, uh, also electronic government was introduced in 2006, uh, as well as opt uh, business processes were optimized uh, with one-stop shops information system. Uh, the next, I want to uh, briefly discuss about the Kyrgyzstan case. According to the representative of Transparency International Kyrgyzstan, Adilbek Shashinbayev, the result of failed work on fighting against corruption lies on the fact that government agency fights against the consequences of corruption, but not the actual causes of the corruption. Uh, in 2018, a number of major politicians and high-ranking officials were detained in connection with the combined heat and power plant modernization project, one of the biggest uh, corruption scandals in, in Kyrgyzstan after the accident that left Bishkek residents without the heat for almost a week in cold weather. And um, each of the presidents of Kyrgyzstan, uh, starting from Askar Akaev, had began the fight against corruption, starting on the decree on measures on combating corruption, the second president, Kurman Bebakiev, also approved the action plan for the implementation of the state anti-corruption strategy. Uh, the third president, Almaz Bebek Atambayev, had also signed a decree on the state strategy of anti-corruption policy. And the recent fifth president, Soran Bajin Bebekov, also has been, uh, had um, created five new codes and two uh, laws entered into force. So the systemic fight against corruption is absent in, in Kyrgyzstan due to uh, several reasons, such as low level of social protection, imperfection of the legislation, or the obvious unwillingness of legislators, uh, lack of a clear and effective system of law enforcement agencies to combat corruption. So preventing corruption is much more effective than dealing with its consequences. The actions of authority, uh, authority, um, authorities in this direction today seem to be extremely ineffective. There was no firm political will. The actions of the authorities are accidental and inconsistent. Um, the next uh, country is Tajik. Tajikistan. Uh, the Tajikistan case, uh, the level of corruption remained very high in this country throughout all the stages of the government. Complex bureaucratic procedures pose major problems for investors. Protection of their rights is problematic as the judiciary is highly influenced and pressured by the ruling political class. The court system suffers from endemic corruption, including bribery of judges and prosecutors. Uh, the foreign companies operating or trying to enter the Tajikistan market encounter bureaucratic red tape because of the lack of transparency when applying for the state tenders. There is no designated uh, procurement law and state purchase are regulated by the governmental decrees. Businesses face two types of corruption, uh, in the uh, petty corruption in the form of um, fee or bribe or by the state officials and high level corruption that usually occurs with a large public contract. Uh, that, uh, nevertheless, the first law of the Republic of Tajikistan, the fight against corruption, was created in 2005. The first anti-corruption strategy was adopted uh, from 2008 to 2012. Uh, the next anti-corruption um, strategy was adopted from 2013 to 2020, but was subject to significant cri criticism, according to the OECD report. And uh, the recent new law Republic of Tajikistan on the fight against corruption was implemented in 2020. Uh, there, there are some, uh, I will not go to details, but there are some, pay, uh, some cases of corruption uh, happening in um, big corruption scandals that happened in Tajikistan, which we discussed uh, detailed in our paper. Uh, Uzbekistan also remains one of the most corrupt countries in Central Asia region, and this long-standing problem dates back to the Soviet area. Bribing officials and tax evasion are widespread and one of the key obstacles in doing business. The investment environment is unsteady because of widespread corruption, poor infrastructure, and inadequate rule of law. In the last uh, five years, the government started to take problems of corruption more seriously with the uh, incoming new president of Uzbekistan, Shavat Mirziyev, who signed the law on combating corruption in 2017. By the decree of the president in 2007, the state anti-corruption program for 2017-18 was approved, which is the main program document for the prevention of the fight against corruption. The state program provides the implementation of 51 anti-corruption measures in five areas. In Uzbekistan, the legislation of public procurement before the adoption of the relevant law had contradiction and was structured. 
so for the last two years, Uzbekistan has made a major progress in fight against corruption at all levels, as the process of exposing corrupt officials is becoming more publicly available in the media. In May, in May 2019, um, the president of Uzbekistan approved an anti-corruption program for the coming years, according to the document, state bodies were obliged to access corruption risk and draw up draw up lists of officials exposed to the uh, to the risks. Uh, in the message to Parliament in January 2020, uh, President uh, Shafhat Mirziyev put forward a number of important proposals to ensure the rule of law and effective way to combat corruption. So he announced that the fight against corruption in Uzbekistan will be effective if the society as a whole is instilled with the honesty vaccine. The president acknowledged that the businessmen face corruption in the process of allocating land plots of them in the provision of cadastral banking custom services. And the last but not least is uh, the case on Turkmenistan uh, is uh, very limited data. Turkmenistan is a highly authoritarian state in the Central Asia region under the power of the president, Gurman Bilu Birduhamedov. The level of corruption in Turkmenistan is one of the highest in the world. The first anti-corruption law in Turkmenistan dates back to the 2014. In June 2017, the State Service for Combating Economic Crimes was created in the country. The fight against corruption is uh, regularly voiced in the statements of the officials of Turkmenistan. However, the discussions do not go further on just acknowledging that corruption is an extremely negative and immoral phenomenon that poses a threat to the security of the state. Detailed information on specific criminal cases is not published, as well as statistical data are not disseminated. State-owned media in Tur Turkmenistan do not publish information on the level of corruption in the country. Nevertheless, President of Turkmenistan, in a festive address to employees and the Minister of National Security on the occasion of 26th anniversary of this minister, said that the fight against corruption and bribery should be strengthened and those negative phenomena should be completely eradicated. So, um, earlier it has been reported some cases of abuse power. Uh, also, we talk about this in the paper. In May 2017, investigations were announced against the former heads of the construction of the gas chemical complex. So according to the Risk Advisory Group of Corruption Challenges Index 2019, Turkmenistan remains the country where business face the biggest corruption challenges, excessive bureaucracy, and the need for inside contacts, in part because the government uh, does not disclose all its members. So the fight against corruption in the country is, is accompanied by the dismissal of officials, the provision of their titles and awards. Um, so basically, this is just, uh, I think the time is up, but... Um, Yes, yes, please. We don't have much time. Please yes. conclude. Yes, I want to conclude that this is an ongoing paper, so we have more. Uh, so we will work more on this paper, and just wanted to say that the further we will look at how the government sector has grown in these countries. Thank you very much. Okay. For your uh, thank you, Janar, for your interesting presentation. And our next speaker is uh, Daulet Ahmetov, also a PhD candidate at Graduate School of Public Policy, and his uh, work is titled "Green Growth of Business as Usual." Kazakhstan case. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope uh, you can see my presentation. Okay. I'm not yet. Just a second. Uh -huh. <clears throat> 